uh, Harish Krishna Singh, um, the Lib Dems can candidate for uh, Stamford and Grantham constituency, and I'll be, I'm Sam Hughes, and I'll be asking a few questions regarding the upcoming election. Yeah. So, um, Harish, in 2016, your party voted to leave the EU. Uh, sorry, your, uh, the UK voted to leave the EU. That's right. This was labelled as a once in a lifetime vote. Mm -hmm. uh, your, your party's plans um, ignore the views of the people and what they voted for, undermine the sense of the democracy, some could argue. So why is your party so determined to go against the views of the people to stop Brexit? Well, I fully agree with you. The people voted to come out in 2016. Yes. Who was the archi architect of that referendum? Mr. David Cameron. Mr. David Cameron took us out. Uh, put the votes out to people, the people finally, due to a lot of misinformation that actually happened with the Leave campaign, yeah? Do you remember the 350 million pounds a week into the on the bus? Which is never materialized or will never materialize, all right? And then Mr. Cameron decided to pack his bag up and leave everything. If he had, at that moment in time, within the six month period that we had, to say, right, the people has voted to come out, we are out, so we start the negotiation to come out there and then. Okay. He should have taken the responsibility and not cowed out of it and leave the people in the lurch that we are in today. As you can see, the, everything in the shop is going up, the cost of petrol has gone up because we buy our oil in dollar and our pound has declined, not over 20% against the dollar. Okay. So, therefore, all the costs, the goods, the lorries, wind is going to go up, so it's bound to go up. And when that was put forward, it was bandished as project fear. And people still talk about that. And the next thing was immigration. That was a big thing. Okay, so what are the benefits of stopping Brexit going ahead for, for my generation? Stop stopping Brexit going ahead, it will be we stay within Europe, we we'll stay within their family people, like-minded people, we have had relative peace over the last 70 years and I would like personally to say to have the same for you, for your children, for your grandchildren, so they can be built a, an enfant cordial, a peace and harmony in Europe. But together, together we stand, we divided we fall. Okay, but some, some Brexiteers would argue that we are under the control of Europe and we're not in some, in some aspects of our own country. How, how would you respond to that? So how would you say, you know, if they say that Brexit is saying that they were controlled by Europe, how are we controlled by Europe? Europe is one big family, you've got one law, the so governed throughout. True, we adopt every law, and the law that has been passed in Europe has benefited us, it benefited our workforce a lot more. But we gain from the, from the Europe, if you remember Mr. Sasha from before your time, she negotiated a very good rebates for England. We still get the uh, the, the, uh, the rebates. Yeah? Now, if we come out, we're going to lose that. Now, we have a lot of money which is invested from Europe here, which probably you will benefit when you go to further to the universities and further for higher education. A lot of the research is funded by Europe. I want government to fund it. If you take graphene, for example, yeah? yeah, graphene is the toughest material, 10 times taller than steel, and 10 times lighter than steel. You, being a modern student, you will know the benefits of that. Yes. Yeah? You see? And that benefit of it, totally reducing the carbon footprint, fry probably might become cheaper. Is the engine not uh, more efficient? So, okay. those are things, Europe put a lot of the money, nearly 21 million pounds into the research at Manchester University, okay. at UMIS. So these are things that we have gained, but higher education, you see, the doctor when you do your research, is going to suffer because that is mostly in large part if it was funded by Europe. Okay. That, that part of the thing there. Regional development funds, the Wales, Scotland, Ireland, they'll get the majority of it. So from what for the remainder six billion, from the thirteen billion we pay, we got six point four billion back as Mrs. Hatcher's rebate. And we got two billion pounds into the uh, cost of higher education. Yeah, but regional regional development again the same. We got about two billion pounds. 
So you know, we literally we are neutral, more or cost neutral, because we got the money back here into our economy. That's why our economy of time will be so well. Okay. Um, do you not think it'd be more democratic to put it um, democratic? Sorry, to put it back to the people and hold and hold a second vote. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. I would like to give you that. This is what we have been saying. Okay. That we must give people's vote. We got the people to vote because people has put us in, put us all into that situation. Yes. By their votes, they have been indeterminate. 60, uh, 62, 60, uh, 52 percent people voted to come out. 48 percent voted to remain. We are going to forget the remaining people, are we? Or are we going to be just going to bang on to, to come out? Okay, so um, so you, you would so you'd suggest a second referendum, but campaign strongly to remain. That would be we will all kind of campaign strongly to remain, unless somebody can show me what would be the benefit of us Englander or being little Englander on the outside, on the periphery of a very large trading block that has a four hundred. 540 million people uh, together, yeah, that can block. When you see in the world, there's three main block, uh, what trading block. You got Europe, you got America, North America, which include Mexico, and then you got the Asian block. Okay. Okay. So moving on from Brexit now, of course, there's so much more to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, climate change is something that my generation, especially, um, feel very strongly about, as it our future it affects. Mm -hmm. Um, you talk about uh, about how you are committing to generating eighty percent of UK of UK electric electricity from renewable sources by twenty thirty. Mm -hmm. How do you plan to fund this? Well, we are already ahead of it. Okay. If you remember the two thousand and ten to two thousand and fifteen government, we had a coalition government. Yes. And who was given the poison chalice of uh, doing our energy with renewable. Chris Yoon. Chris Yoon put a very bold program that was at the time not visible, not feasible, but we're going to generate, start generating by wind turbine all along our coast, yeah, for renewable energy, yeah, and together with solar panel. Yes. And today we have been for weeks lately, we have been running on renewable energy, less on coal dependent power stations. So we can roll that program forward. You know, after when Christian resigned because due to some other factors that were that happened, he was an honorable man. Ed Davy took the cajole and he carried on and with the programs of what's called uh, wind, uh, wind power to harness that, and also invested into development of the wave power. But not only that, we can use all of our recyclables, you know, some other that can be burned efficiently okay. without and re by removal of the plastics, you know. In fact, I tell you this morning itself, yeah. I planted five trees. Five trees. In Stamford, in Nuffington Road, playing fields right down the bottom there. Each one costs 400 pounds. <coughs> this is through my action to where we get the South Castleton District Council to adopt the climate emergency pro uh, program. We have formed a, a committee that's only in two months. Now we've got money voted into that, and so we are planting in each of the main town five trees to start with, to start growing, and they are well um, stable trees that has already been indigenous uh, uh, population trees, and they are big, large, for it to cost 500 pounds. It's been planted, so that is going to grow okay. and it's going to be maintained. Okay. So your party has pledged to ban all non-essential, non-recyclable, single-use plastic in yes. three years. Um, how would you how would you plan to do this? Well, we can to try to get the the supermarkets as a main culprit in reusing those. We can try to change that in terms of the bags. Look, and we we'll also try to educate young people. I'm very pleased that you are taking into consideration and your colleagues as well. Okay. That not to buy any food that is wrapped up in these single-use plastics. Yeah. Yeah, and try to use um, brown bags mm -hmm. for carrying your goods, you know, that would be a, a, a positive. Because what actually has happened, you know, probably you are aware of it, Tesco, all the supermarkets used to have very thin bags, used to give to everybody. Yes. Yeah. So you used to carry uh, carry your whatever you purchased to your home. And then they say, then we, they brought the lifetime bag, mm -hmm. you know, that cost 10 pence. We see more supermarkets selling more of those now 
to, to, to the customer, and the single use, the small bag has been withdrawn. And what is being found now, that those bags are being used to people put their rubbish, the rubbish, the biodegradable rubbish, all into that, and putting it into the bag to go to the landfill sites. Okay. So those case things we have to stop.